so any questions at all you know you can put it on the chat or you can you can ask um any particular specific verse or uh, you know the whole idea or the thought process in chapter four maybe right Okay, so it, it's good that we, um, you know, get clarity, uh, or you, we be clear in our in our own minds about um, and understand why. Um, um, so why Paul is, you know, um, you know the intensity with which Paul is actually addressing the issue, right? Um, because it's it's not just you know keeping certain rules. And not keeping certain rules, it's not uh, it's not as simple as that. But people were actually in turning back to the law; they were rejecting. <laughs> sorry, excuse me, rejecting grace. So, um, so that was the issue. Okay, so um, so the thing is, uh, um, you know, practical application, you know, for today's church. Um, we need to be uh, careful in not uh, in not pushing people you know into the law you know we might not do it um uh with regard to the jewish law but uh, we might be you know without our knowing adding certain things to to the work of grace and uh, and maybe you know teaching that uh, mixture um yeah kanan i see your message well actually uh, thomas he sent me a message saying that uh, he's unwell um and that he'll attend the next class so he's not well um yeah probably you can um did he say that he's trying to sorry Kanan. so did you say that he's trying to join and he could not did he say anything like that he's unable to join is it i see um okay i'm not sure what is the issue so anyway let me try and um yeah send him the link to his whatsapp it should not be a problem actually if he's uh, uh, checking out the class stream All right so just give me a second okay Okay, so that's done. Fine. Anyway, he can he can log in. I sent him the link. Um, right. Okay. So um, so we need to be uh, you know we need to be clear that we don't actually you know advocate the law uh, while it may not be typically the way it was then or you know referring to the law that we see there and. Uh, but we we unknowingly we might be teaching the church or we might be teaching other believers you know certain things that which are uh, which are contradictory to grace or we might teach it in addition to grace so okay this also you need to do this also you must keep um so we just need to be careful of that right okay okay let's look at um, if there are no questions then we'll uh, you know we'll go into chapter 5 but feel free to ask whenever you have any doubts or questions okay so um, chapter 5 we looked at we read through verses 1 to 6 so um, verse 1 right chapter 5 verse 1 stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free so he's saying you know stand fast um, and the word used there uh, the Greek word there for stand fast um, meaning you stand your ground stand firm okay so you continue in it be strong continue in it do not move 
Okay, that's what it means. You persevere, continue in it. So, which meant that yes, there will be uh, times when when these kind of suggestions come, these kind of teachings come, but you stand firm. Stand firm in what? Stand firm without moving, being strong, in the freedom, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Okay, Stand firm in the freedom, in the liberty uh, that Christ has given us. Uh, you know, the truth always sets us free, right? um, which is what the Lord Jesus said, that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Truth has this ability to set us free right uh, set us free not not to set us free to do whatever we want or against you know even in fact if you look at it you know that's the thing you have free will you have you know you can if you want to you can like disobey and walk away but the fact is the truth will always empower us and um, and set us free to obey Set us free to follow. Set us free to walk in in the truth. Right. So, um, so he's saying, stand first, stand fast, be strong in the liberty, and don't be entangled again. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back because that um, entangles you. That ensnares you. Right. So, so you don't be entangled again in, in, into this bondage. So you've been set free, stand firm in it. Okay. Verse two, I, Paul, say to those who have become, uh, that if you be, sorry, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. So of course, he's talking to this Gentile church and he's saying, I know these people have come and shared this message, but if you, you know, in wanting to be accepted by Christ or in wanting to be, uh, you know, spiritual and wanting to obey the truth, if you become, circumcised then christ will profit you nothing you know the work of christ the work of christ which is the work of grace the work of redemption you know what profit is that in the sense what benefit is that whatever christ has done right because you are attempting because what christ has done has to be accepted or received by faith what what the lord jesus has done is received by faith it, there's no performance from our side Right? It's received, it's freely given, and it's freely received, and it's received by faith. But now you are going back to works where you're saying that I need to do this, I need to keep this in order to, I need to perform all these things in order to be accepted, in order to be called righteous, in order to be called spiritual, in order to you know, gain something from God. Right. So, so Paul is warning, you know, if you do this, if you become circumcised or go back to what the law dictates, then Christ will profit you nothing. There's no benefit. Right. And I testify again, verse three, to every man who becomes circumcised that he's a debtor to keep the whole law. Now you, you know, you wanting to keep certain aspect of the law, like maybe, you know, these people have taught you about circumcision. Maybe these people are teaching you about, you know, you need to keep some days and months, you know, that like what we saw in chapter four and verse 10. Um, maybe you're keeping certain things, you're doing certain things. Okay. You you are wanting to, intending to become circumcised. You're, uh, maybe you're, you know, you want to keep certain days, times, and you know, observing certain days as holy um, compared to the other days. Okay. Now, I want to tell you that if you are doing, you know, one thing, then you you are a debtor. In the sense, you're going back to the law. Now, you are a debtor. You are in debt. You owe. You need to keep the entire thing. You need to keep everything so, because if you, um, you know, if you uh, you need to keep the whole because if you break one, you break the entire law, right? So that is what it is. So you need to keep the whole law. And uh, verse four, you have become estranged from Christ. You have become separated, alienated from Christ in wanting to go back to works and wanting to go back to the law. You have become alienated. You have become separated from Christ because what is in in you know, what you're actually trying to do is you're attempting, you're trying to be justified by the law, made righteous 
by the law. You want to be made righteous by the law. You want to have a good standing, a right standing with God by the law, which can never happen. Right? So you are uh, you are saying that I want this righteousness by keeping these things, and I want to you know receive that acceptance. I want to be accepted by God in keeping these things. You know, many times we we you know sometimes we uh, many times actually we we subconsciously do that. You know, I want to be accepted by God. Uh, I have fallen in sin i want to be accepted by god so i will do these things you know i will punish myself like many times we do that right we i will punish myself i will you know um uh punish myself by doing these things or i will uh, i will do certain things in order to be accepted by god I'm, I'm feeling so bad but in order to be accepted by god i i will will i will try to do this i will i will try to do this well Justification, what happened on the cross, um, a one-time thing where he, he declared you righteous, it did not happen because of works. It did not happen because of man's performance, what man, man did or tried to do. What, no matter what man did, it was, it was still, it would fall short of the glory of God, right? So that is what we see in, even in the book of Romans that, uh, you know, uh, Romans three. Let's um, let's look at that quickly. Okay, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified freely. Verse twenty four. Okay, Romans three twenty three and twenty four. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And then, you know, the rest of the verse, we see he is just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So, so here, going back to chapter 5, uh, Galatians, so he's saying, you know, you, you have actually distanced yourself uh, because you're attempting to be justified by law, whereas we know that you are actually justified freely by grace through faith in Christ, right? Now, uh, for we through the spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith, you know, the, the full full work of, uh, you know, redemption. Um, we, we eagerly wait because it's, it's by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. So in Christ Jesus, it's it's neither about becoming circumcised and and following Him, or it's it's not also about you know, hey, I'm I'm uncircumcised, I'm a Gentile, um, you know, therefore you know God accepts me anyway. Well, it is this circumcision or uncircumcision; it does not avail anything, but faith okay but faith faith in christ faith in the finished work of christ faith in one what he has done and what he's freely um, uh, extending so that you might receive it by faith faith working through love okay. faith working through love so you see um uh it's it's something that is wonderful something that is free and something that is of faith, right? So I can be totally ignorant right, of the law, but I can receive justification through faith. Right? I do not know the details in and out of the law, but I can come to Christ in all my ignorance, but full of faith in what he has done on the cross, and I can receive justification i can be just justified and i i can be made right with god so that is something that happens it's something that is wonderful okay let's read verses 7 to 15 okay you ran well who hindered you from obeying the truth this persuasion does not come from him who calls you a little leaven leavens the whole lump i have confidence in you in the lord 
that you will have no other mind. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Okay, so here he asks the question, verse 7, who hindered you? What stopped you or who stopped you from obeying the truth? Okay, so similar to another question that he asks, right, uh, in chapter 3 and verse 1, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Right? Uh, similarly, he asks the Galatians a very, you know, like thought-provoking, uh, something that will cause them to stop and think about what they are doing. So he asks such a question. He says, you ran well. Uh, meaning, of course, running is, again, figurative. Like, it's a figure of speech. Like we see in Hebrews, you know, um, um, run with endurance, meaning you live your life. You live your entire life. Um, you So that is referred to as walking or running, right? So saying, run. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? You ran well. You were running well. You were actually living well. So who hindered you? Okay. This persuasion does not come from him. So this, in case you're thinking that this message and this uh, call to, you know, adhere to the law or to keep the law, Right. If you if you're thinking that that is from from God Himself, uh, well, that is that is not true, right? Because this temptation does not come from uh, Him who called you, or this persuasion does not come from Him who uh, called you. Um, so in in verse eight, you know, he he's used the word. Um, you know that that Greek word persuasion. It means uh, something that is that is you know very deceptive. So it's a persuasion. It's like it's like temptation. Maybe you know you can even consider. Uh, uh, so it's a it's a deceptive persuasion. You know, something that brings you to bondage. So you think this persuasion does not come from He who called you. From him who calls you, like this this not, does not come. That is not the origin. God, the Father, is not the source. Jesus is not the source. Right? The Holy Spirit who leads you, He is not the source of this persuasion. Right. So, uh, so if it is not from Him, then you know who it is from. Right. So it is error. It is not truth. It does not come from the one who is called the truth. So any persuasion to to the law, any persuasion to to for Christ plus something else, any persuasion or any kind of uh, teaching which is referring to <clears throat> yeah salvation yes it's through Jesus, but you also need to do this in order to be saved, in order to be righteous. That does not come from God. So it's a it's a warning signal, you know. It's a it's a it's for all of us that uh, we don't go into that kind of a teaching ourselves, a kind of you know you know uh, maybe a wrong kind of teaching. We don't go into that kind of deception because it's you know it's very plain, very clear, and also it's a warning that we also do not do the same thing, you know, as ministers, as, uh, you know, believers, as disciples, maybe people who are called to minister, 
in our own ministering in whichever setting you know whether it's a small group of a few believers whether it's uh, you know we are we are pastors uh, uh, preaching to hundreds thousands whatever it's a warning for us that we do not do the same thing right because this does not come from he who calls us this persuasion does not come from who he who calls us okay okay so in verse 9 a little leaven leavens the whole lump now this this is what we need to understand that you know it could be <clears throat> one small thing that we add on you know you do this and you keep this also so a little leaven leavens the whole lump okay one thing is about the teaching right it corrupts corrupts us it could be a small thing but it corrupts us also the fact is that uh, you know even if there are few people in the gathering and they are you know following this you know, they are advocating this they are teaching this now they are going to be influencing the entire group so we need to be careful about this we need to be warned about this you know uh, i think we we read that in corinthians also right corinthians talking about this person who is having an immoral lifestyle um so there he says you know you know a little leaven leavens the whole lump the same usage saying that this is what happens that they are going to be influencing they're going to be uh, bringing everyone down right so you need to do something about it okay uh, you need to intervene you need to bring in correction bring in change so a little leaven leavens the whole lump um, verse 10 i have confidence in you in the lord that you will have no other mind Okay. No other thought pattern, no other decision, no other mind. You know, you, in fact, he's saying, you know, don't even think about it. I, I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind. Um, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment. And he goes on to say, you know, if I, if I still preach circumcision, you know, if I am preaching the law, if I'm preaching circumcision, if I'm going around traveling wherever I'm going, and if I'm telling people, hey, you need to keep the law, you need to go back to the law, you need to be circumcised. If you think that I'm doing that, then why am I being persecuted? Have you thought about it? You know? So in other words, he's saying, I'm teaching. I'm not teaching that. Like I'm teaching people to get away from that. And which is why I am being persecuted. I'm being persecuted for for teaching the truth, for speaking the truth, um, for guiding people into the truth. And which is why, you know, like we saw in the previous chapter, the, the you know, there is this struggle, there is this persecution. Those who are born according to the flesh are persecuting those who are born according to the promise or according to the spirit. Right? So if I'm doing this, why do I still preach i mean still suffer persecution because the the, the answer is this that he's not preaching uh, and saying that people should go back to the law keep the law okay so um so this is this i wish uh, then then he says you know th then the offense of the cross has ceased now um, which is again he's bringing a very important uh, truth that the cross and the message of the gospel is offensive okay because it uh, it's a it, it is offensive it brings it is a stumbling block to people like like he says for the greek it is a stumbling block the cross is a stumbling block okay where do we see that you know um in corinthians where uh corinthians first corinthians chapter one right uh, we can go there First Corinthians chapter one and verse twenty one. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the message of the foolishness preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, and Greek seeks Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. Okay, so what is he preaching? Christ crucified, the Lord Jesus crucified dying on the cross so that is what he's preaching to the jews a stumbling block and to the greek foolishness but to those who are called both jews and greeks christ the power of god and the wisdom of god okay verse 23 but we preach christ crucified to the jews a stumbling block and to the greeks foolishness 
Okay, so what Paul is saying is that the cry, the cross, the message of the cross, uh, is offensive. You know, it's a stumbling block to people. Um, but for those who who actually are being saved, now it is the power of God. It is the wisdom of God. Okay, so the offense of if I'm, you know, if I'm, if I suffer persecution, um, then if I preach circumcision, then you know I will not actually suffer persecution. If I preach circumcision, and if I'm not being persecuted, then you know there is no problem. I mean, you know, the message of the cross, the offense of the cross, has ceased, has stopped. But that is not the case, right? Um, so, uh, and then verse twelve it says, "Those who trouble you, I wish they would even." You know, cut themselves off. They would mutilate themselves. You know, referring to circumcision. So you know, I I wish that they would, you know, just mutilate, amputate themselves. Uh, you know, in a reference to, you know, in a reference to circumcision. Right? He's saying they would that they would go ahead and, you know, cause this harm to themselves. You know, I wish they would do that because they are causing so much of harm in the body of Christ because of their. Uh, wrong teaching because of what they are bringing into the body of Christ, which is causing confusion, which is causing people to uh, leave uh, or throw away grace uh, and all that. Right? It's a hindrance to people. So he's saying, I, you know, out of a lot of uh, pain, he's saying, you know, I wish that they would even amputate themselves, that they would cut themselves off, right? And um, and and here, uh, verse thirteen. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. You know, you've been called to liberty. You've been invited to freedom. Okay, to live a life of freedom in Christ, which does not when when you say life of liberty, that does not mean that you know I I, I can do whatever I want to do, or I I will do whatever I want to do, and then I'll still be. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'll still be accepted or approved. Um, in the eyes of God. Well, that's not the thing. You are called to freedom, in a sense, freedom to walk in truth. And you've been given the freedom, you've been empowered by God to walk in the truth. Okay? And it's, it's it's a it's a very freeing thing. You're not you're not under bondage. You're not under the law. Um, and it's it's actually called um, you know if you look at Romans uh, eight again. Um, uh, you may you may have studied it uh, last semester, right? It says um, for the law, Romans chapter eight and verse two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You know, freedom in in different aspects. Well, that's what we have received, right? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death right uh, the spirit of law of spirit of life you have actually been released into that um, so we are free from the law of sin and death from the law of that this cause and effect of sin and death you have been set free from that so we've been called to freedom right you've been called to this liberty so paul says uh, same verse, verse 13, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. Now, it is true that you've been called to freedom. It is true that you've been called to liberty. But this freedom that you are called to, this uh, that you enjoy, uh, that you're called to walk in, you know, do not use it as an occasion, as an opportunity to indulge in the flesh. Right. So, do not use this liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, or as an occasion to indulge in the flesh. Right. Do not use this liberty because you've been given free will. You've been given, you know, you 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 wholeheartedly you're following Christ, and you have you're walking in this freedom. Now, do not use it as an occasion to get back into the works of the flesh. Right. To indulge or to uh, to even give yourselves in to the appetite of the flesh, so that's the thing, right? It's it's not it's not for it's not a license to sin. 
find this grace that you enjoyed this freedom it's not a license to sin it's not but you be careful that you do not use this freedom or in other words be careful that you don't misuse this freedom right don't misuse this freedom to indulge in the flesh don't misuse this freedom right as an occasion as an opportunity um to get into the works of the flesh now that's that's not what you're called for you've been called for freedom don't be entangled don't be ensnared right um enjoy the freedom right for the law is fulfilled in one word even in this you shall love your neighbor as yourself but if you bite and devour one another beware lest you be consumed by one another i think that's pretty self explanatory right okay let's look at verse 16 onwards i say then walk in the flesh and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusts after the spirit against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you don't do the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication and cleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envy murders drunkenness revelries and the like of which i tell you beforehand that just as i also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control against such there is no law and those who are christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires if we live in the flesh sorry if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us not become conceited provoking one another envying one another okay some you know some valuable instructions for for the believer who was called to liberty who was called to freedom okay so here's here here are some guidelines you know here are some instructions so the, the wonderful thing is this that we have been called to liberty we have been invited to walk in freedom now here are some here are some guidelines you know he's saying this is what it is verse 16 you know walk in the spirit walk in the spirit he's not saying walk in the law like right? walk according to the law he's not saying that walk in the spirit okay because the spirit of god will always cause you to walk in freedom walk in the spirit and what will that result in saying that and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh okay now if you, if if you, even if you're trying to have a set of these laws and you're saying okay uh, uh you know i'm going to do this i'm going to keep this day i'm going to you know all, doing all these things that will not help you against the lust of the flesh right so that is what paul is saying hey that will not help you at all so the key to living uh, a life of not fulfilling the lust of the flesh for the believer is this you walk in the spirit meaning you walk as led by the spirit okay this so much in walk in the spirit right walk as empowered by the holy spirit walk according to the suggestions of the holy spirit walk according to the leading of the holy spirit the prompting of the holy spirit right so saying walk in the spirit and when you do that you will not you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh so that is the key um so you know day, every day every moment you walk according to the spirit walk in the spirit verse 17 explaining you know the flesh lusts against the spirit okay our flesh uh referring to our bodily appetites when we say flesh it's also referring to our unrenewed mind right unrenewed thinking our mind which is not come under submission to the word of god right uh 
which is not been brought under submission to God. Maybe, you know, there, there could be just one area where our thinking is not according to the thinking of the Holy Spirit. Right? There could be one area where we're saying, you know, in this, I'm still thinking according to the, like how the world would think. I'm still thinking according to the ways of the flesh. Right? It is not brought in subjection to the ways of God. Okay, so he's saying the flesh actually lusts against the spirit. And the spirit is against the flesh. The suggestions of the Holy Spirit, the leading of the Holy Spirit, the guiding of the Holy Spirit is against the draw of the invitation of the flesh. Flesh, again, just a reminder, it talks about um, our bodily appetites, which are against God. You know, there are bodily appetites which are, uh, you know, which need to be satisfied in the right way. Okay. So, uh, in the right manner and within the right setting. Right. So, he's talking about that, which is, which is a draw, which is an, which is a inducement, a temptation to be fulfilled in the wrong ways. Right. So, that's again the flesh, and also our unrenewed mind, mind that is not submitted to the ways of God. Right. Okay. So. The flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit is against the flesh. And these are contrary, these are opposite. So that you do not do the things that you wish to do. Right? In your spirit, you know what is right. In your spirit, you've got a revelation of what is right and what is wrong. But when you are walking according to the flesh, you end up doing that. You end up giving in to the appetite of the flesh, right? Because the flesh is against the spirit. The spirit is against the flesh, right? These are opposite. Verse 18, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, that's another thing. Those For those of, uh, you know, is continuing on addressing those who wish to be under the law. You know, if you're led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Uh, in other words, he's saying, you know, if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Therefore, because you are not under the law, um, you know, you, you, you are not under the lust of the flesh or you, you know, you are not giving in to the work of the flesh because you're going into the work of the spirit. Right? So, if you're led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are evident. So, here, uh, 19 onwards, uh, all the way up to 20, um, you know, 22, 23, contrasting what is the work of the flesh. Now, the, you know, he already is established that the flesh is against the spirit. It is opposite, it is contrary, right? So he's beginning to explain, okay, now this is the works of the flesh. What are the works of the flesh? Okay, this is listing a few things, right? Every, which are very, very, now works of the, uh, very apparent, right? very clear. It's now, there's nothing hidden, you know, this is the work of the flesh. Um, so uh, it's it's really uh, you know it's manifest it's uh, it's displayed it is you can recognize it now these are the works of the flesh of course there are certain things that you know motives and attitudes uh, which are not listed here but he addresses it in a in a different place uh, i think in um, you know in Ephesians, he talks about that okay uh, so we can you know we can we look at that but here he's talking about things that are very very apparent which are very um, easily recognizable. Um, these are so he gives a list of that. What are those things? Adultery. Okay, so he's addressing married people who are trying to or who are having a physical or uh, emotional relationship with others apart from their spouse. So adultery, fornication. You know, a physical sexual rela relationship outside or before. Uh, marriage, fornication, uncleanness, uh, lewdness, you know, um, so all these things, you know, indulging in sinful works of the flesh, um, lewdness, which is, you know, which is brazen, which is uh, completely, you know, you're rebellious and you're openly sinful, um, openly, uh, 
you know, going against God's laws, lewdness, right? Then idolatry, sorcery, hatred, you know, you see the list, hatred, you know, deep hatred for someone saying that, you know, I hate this person, I hate it. Um, you know, even this whole thing of hatred, contentions means fighting, loud quarreling, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, right? anger, great anger, and an outburst of that anger, uh, resulting in maybe, you know, hitting out uh, and, and all this, um, fighting, hitting out uh, because of anger, maybe uh, because of great anger, you know, maybe breaking things, all these are outbursts of wrath, right? So Paul is saying that, you know, listing out these things, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, again, dissensions meaning, um, you know, it's, it's the opposite of unity, right? Dissension, uh, being separated, division, right? Um, and... Uh, arguments and everything bringing about division rather than unity dissensions then um what else heresies wrong teaching envy comparing coveting murders drunkenness revelries revelries again it's like you know um, a wild celebration um which involves works of the flesh, or you know, which involves things that are against uh, the ways of God, which involves drinking and 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 all the uh, uh, and something on those lines, right? Revelries, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, and and the like, which means you know, and things like that. So anything which uh, which is on these lines, right? So it's not a complete list. He's saying like that, things like these. Um, so he's saying, I want to tell you beforehand that just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things, you know, those who practice such things, which means that they are following it, <coughs> excuse me, um, those who do these things regularly, those who practice these things, those who, you know, when you say practice, <coughs> excuse me, so sorry. Um, so when you say practice, you know, you're doing it over and over again. It's become part of your life. Um, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, this is, this is the reality. Right? If you practice these things, you know, you look, you look at this and he's saying, hey, if you're going to be, if you're going after these things, if you're going to make this, uh, if you're going to carry on if you're going to have this uh, in your life, then you cannot, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, then, um, so what will happen is that, you know, what we see in Hebrews, where we see that sin is deceitful and sin hardens, right? Um, we see this in Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. And uh, verse 13, <clears throat> uh, exhort one another daily. Maybe verses 12 and 13. Beware, brethren, lest, in, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceit, deceitfulness of sin. Okay, so this is what, what happens. Sin ca causes uh, because of its deceitfulness, it ca causes a hardening, hardening of our lives. You know, hardening meaning that you you are no more tender towards the things of God. You're no more sensitive to the things of God. You're hardened, you're scarred, and unwilling to follow God, right? unwilling to follow Him. You become a rebel, you hardened yourself. Why? Uh, because that's that's what sin is. Right? That's what a lifestyle of sin does. So you're continuing to do it. You, your, you know, your sensitivity to God, your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, 
it just keeps reducing reducing your uh, you know uh, what happens is our willingness to follow him right our willingness to please him uh, all that our appetite for god actually is replaced by an appetite for these things appetite for the things of the flesh and it can even bring us to a place of rejecting christ right? rejecting christ therefore here's this warning right he's saying that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god what the kingdom of god involves the rule and reign of the king and all that you know the realm of the king we have been actually taken out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god into the kingdom of light but if this is going to be a lifestyle and if you're going to be pursuing this intentionally then you will come to a place of even rejecting christ right so he's saying you um you will come to a place of not inheriting the kingdom okay verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit but the fruit of the spirit this is what the holy spirit does right so again paul is emphasizing to them to go back to the things of the spirit to go back to the freedom that is in the spirit to go back you know to to reject you know the, for the all these things of the law keeping the law and, and saying that 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 is what righteousness is you know to to reject that to go back to the spirit so he's saying but the fruit of the spirit the end result the work of this end result of the work of the spirit in our lives right because if you're going to be following law you're going to be cutting yourself out off this right but now when you pursue when you walk in freedom when you walk in the spirit right and not fulfill the lust of the flesh when you walk in the spirit this is what will happen right verse 25 if we live uh, sorry uh, but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering which is um, you know patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control or self governing ability and um, against these things against such there is no law no there is no rule to say don't walk in patience or there's no rule that says don't walk in love there's no rule that says you know uh, don't walk in don't be faithful or don't walk in faithfulness and goodness no against this there is no law it is the end result the fruit of walking in the spirit this is the work of the spirit in our in your life and uh, verse 24 then those who are christ's those who belong to christ have crucified the flesh Okay, this is what happened on the cross you have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires now you need to pursue the spirit or walk in the spirit then you will not fulfill the desire of the flesh you know this is what has already happened on the cross this is what has happened you died to these things but as long as we are in this body on this earth you know there will be this draw of the flesh or invitation time you know from time to time you'll have this invitation right you'll have this request friend request from the flesh right saying okay i want to be your friend you know but don't accept okay what is he saying saying those who are in the christ have those who are christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us continue to live a life in the spirit let us not become conceited which means proud let us not become conceited provoking one another you know um, provoking which means uh, um, uh, you know uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to pro uh, trying to stir up the flesh in one another trying to anger one another irritate one another right let us not become proud and let us not do that or even envying one another right let us not do that okay so so he's saying that hey, this is the work of the spirit so continue to walk in the spirit continue to live in the spirit and uh, when you do that you will not fulfill the uh, desires of the flesh you will not 
satisfy the invitations of the flesh you will live a overcoming life right so so as uh, you know so that's the thing you know uh, it, it it definitely applies to us and applies uh, you know we something that we can put to practice and it's just some it's a warning that we need to take note of and uh, and pursue the spirit walk in the spirit and be obedient and sensitive to the leading of the spirit okay we'll stop here and next class we will uh, I mean, we'll continue with chapter 6 and also we will look into efficiency okay we'll stop here right. thank you god bless